Hey, 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 friends, this is Carrie, and welcome back to I Like Reddit channel. Today we have some stories out of the Entitled Parent subreddit. Let's begin. Our first story is by Rat Pack King. EM doesn't get her van, nor will she ever. Hey guys, this is my first time posting here, so sorry if the story is a little long. I'll try and keep to the details. I have worked in travel and tourism industry for several years, mainly transportation, but some hospitality and business management. Saying that the business I am in is rife with entitled people in general is an understatement. At the time of this story, I had been with the company for a few months. It was starting to get closer to the holidays. So, my office was getting busier and busier with more families planning to rent a vehicle rather than taking Dad's beat-up 1998 Suburban to Grandma's house. I was still gleaming with positivity about my job, unaware of the horrors that people could turn into when their family vacation is on the line. December of 2016, and Christmas travelers have started piling outside our doors first thing in the morning. Our office opened at 7 a.m., but we were usually there by 6.30. One morning, we see a small line of people, which is to be expected, but what stands out from this one is the entitled mother at the front of the line. We will call her EM, and her six high-spirited children climbing on the railing outside our office. We managed to get inside the building and get things up and running for the day. My manager greeting EM and letting her know we will be open in a few more minutes. EM, what do you mean? We've been standing out here for half an hour, in the cold. Can't you bring my children in? My manager sort of blinks and says, of course, they could come in. It will be just a few minutes before everything is up and running. My two other co-workers and I look at each other and just internally flatline. Before my co-worker gives me a knowing look and mouths, this is going to be a fun one. My manager brings the woman and her children in while we work to get the computers booted up in the office in running shape. For 15 minutes, this woman repeatedly asked if we're done and can get me my dang car yet, while her kids use our lobby chairs as a jungle gym. Admittedly, the kids were pretty cute, staying relatively calm. Once the computers are booted up, my manager has me look up this woman's reservation. I say hello, and the EM ignores me. Not uncommon, but I continue to get the system started. I ask for her name, and she spits it at me while shooing one of her kids away from her legs. This is where things get complicated. Her reservation was for a minivan, which we were completely sold out of. How she even managed to make the reservation, I don't know, but it was time stamped being made only an hour before we got to the store. When I try and inform her of this, you could see her blood starting to boil. EM. Are you kidding me? I made that reservation ages ago. I need this van for me and my children to visit my mother. It's Christmas time. How could you be sold out? Me, being a newbie and starting to panic a little, my manager, we'll call him James, steps back up to the front after noticing this. James. Ma'am, please do not yell at my employees. We are sorry we don't have your minivan at this time. You are correct, it is Christmas time, so we've been sold out, but if you wait a few moments, I can try and call another location to secure one for you. EM, how could you not have one here waiting for me? James, well it appears your reservation was made just this morning, and we've been sold out of minivans for a few days now. If you have a seat, I will gladly try and find one for EM. This better be quick. My kids haven't eaten breakfast yet and they're starving. The kids were fine, still running around and playing in the lobby. James asked me to call another location, thankfully only a few minutes away, and see about getting an extra van. While I'm on the phone in the office, EM is mumbling loudly about how horrible our service has been and how she expected us to make our mistakes worth her time. I managed to get another manager on the line and he says he has no vans left, but does have an extra Suburban we can use. I notify James and he tells one of the drivers in our office to get ready and go and grab it. EM must have heard me say what vehicle it was because she immediately came back up to the counter and demanded that it have leather and heated seats so my children can be comfortable for the long ride. By this point, we just wanted her gone, so we were trying to make this as quick and efficient of a process. James tells me to take her license and process her paperwork, and we can attach the vehicle to her contract once it arrives. I pull open her reservation and type her driver's license number and hit search and me. Uh, James? He turns back around and looks at the screen. A very large warning message has popped up explaining that this woman is essentially on our blacklist. 
for damaging a vehicle, a luxury vehicle, to the tune of $25,000 worth of repairs, all of which has yet to be paid, and the claim was about two years old. James, in a much sterner tone now, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'm afraid we won't be able to get that vehicle for you today. It looks as if you may have had a previous issue with another car back in 2014. EM. I already paid that. It was only a couple of hundred dollars anyway. Ask my lawyer. He will tell you. James. Ma'am, unfortunately we can't. EM. Your job isn't to tell me what I can and can't do. Your job is to get me into that effing car. James. Now picking up the phone with a smile. Actually, ma'am, my job is to weigh whether or not someone is trustworthy enough to be put in one of our vehicles. You clearly aren't. I will have to ask you to leave or I will be calling the police. Liam does a panicked little shuffle, swiping her ID off the counter, gathering up her children, and get out the door. I guess she had figured that this would happen because a big old clunker of an SUV had pulled up outside our office. She hurriedly shoveled her kids in before the driver peeled out of our parking lot. My coworker was right. That was a fun one. What I think is amazing is that the EM thought she could wreck a luxury car from that rental car agency, not pay the damages for two years, then return two years later and attempt to rent another car from them, and everything would be peachy, despite having the outstanding $25,000 balance, which would blacklist her. I just thought that it was funny that she didn't think that they would check the system. Or this was some sort of an elaborate scam to see if she could rent another car from them and they wouldn't check the system. Either that, or she had done this at other places, and this was the last place left that she thought maybe she could rent a car at. Anyway, on to our next story. Our next story is by Handsome Be Wonderful. You ruined Christmas! An actual real story, so nothing too crazy. A few years ago, I worked for a UK video game store franchise called Game as a customer assistant. I took great pride in my work, ensuring that customers always got the best deal I could get for them and often saving hundreds of pounds, often to the annoyance of my manager. Generally, I love dealing with customers. However, at Christmas time, they got nasty. One specific time that I remember was Christmas Eve 2007, December 24th, an EM came in asking for a Wii. The Wii console at the time was considered a must-own console and was extremely hard to get a hold of. I explained to the customer that they were out of stock and they would not be getting any in today. However, I offered to take her name and number and add it to a list and give her a call when some did come in. EM. Not good enough. Me. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. I know other game stores in the city are also out of stock too and have been for a couple of weeks now. EM. I have my son on the phone. Explain to him why you've ruined his Christmas. I so wanted to tell him that he wouldn't be getting a Wii for Christmas because his stupid entitled mother had no foresight to pre-order it despite it being all over the news about the stock issues. However, I just told her it wasn't appropriate for me to take her phone. She eventually left and swore that she would never return. I didn't put her name on the list. A few days later, she came back on one of my days off asking why no one called her. I totally remember that in 2007. My friend pre-ordered and got a Wii and he said it was pretty cool. And I remember hearing there was a kid on the news who lost like 10 pounds because he was playing the, the Wii Fit sports game games and stuff. I don't I don't know if it was Wii Fit, but a lot of people thought that was really cool and that this would be revolutionizing for gaming in the future that people would be, you know, getting up and moving a lot more. Anyway, on to our next story. If you're enjoying my content so far, please put some heart emojis in the comment section below. Our next story is by Small Citron. Entitled mother pitches a fit because I won't pick sesame seeds off her child's hamburger bun. The title pretty much states it all. But I was a waitress at a burger restaurant during my time in college, and I got a family with two kids. The dad was pretty chill, but the mother and the kids were a nightmare. The kids were jumping around from different tables, making a mess, and throwing cutlery around. So I pushed the kitchen to get their food out as quickly as possible, and maybe the kids would stop being so manic once they could eat. The food comes and the burger buns have sesame seeds on them. EM says to me, Oh, he can't eat this. They have sesame seeds on the buns. So I asked if he was allergic and she said, No. 
EK just doesn't like them. And, and then she asks me if I could take the food back to the kitchen and pick the sesame seeds off the bun and bring them back. It was a busy dinner service. So obviously I politely tell her no. If EK doesn't like them on, he can pick them off himself. But I don't have time to do that right now. And I have other tables to attend to. The EM proceeds to berate and insult me and call my manager. The manager backs me up. When it's time to pay, I heard the EM loudly say how I don't deserve a tip for my rude service and the chill dad shot her down and tipped me anyway. Imagining living with that woman, the poor dad. The EM just assumed that she was the only person in that restaurant and dash all to everybody else in there. All of her needs need to be met at this moment, despite the fact that her kids are running amok. You know, that sort of thing. It, it just comes with the entitlement and the narcissism of being an entitled Karen. Anyway, on to our final story. Our final story is by, how do I change this, okay? EM dumps two kids for three days. This story is what's happening to my sister right now. Players, EM, entitled mom, who works with my sister and has two kids. One is eight months old and the other one is two years old. They aren't friends. My sister, S, is in the Navy, who works odd hours and just came off mitts. SR, sister's roommate, who works with her in the same division, but different hours. The EM asked my sister to watch her two kids for free, no payment, no offers to do anything to compensate, Friday night and then again on Sunday during the day. My sister told her that she could do Friday, but had plans on Sunday, but to let her know that if she can't find anyone else, and she'd do it if she was the last resort. My sister wasn't too excited about it, as she had just come off mitts. Basically, seven straight days of working from 5 p.m. to 3 a.m. And this is her first weekend in a while. But she's kind of the nicest, most generous human you'll ever meet. And she sees someone in need, she'll help. The EM goes to my sister's roommate and asks him if he could watch the two kids on Sunday. He says that it should be okay. He didn't ask my sister, as he thought it would be just a few hours, and didn't expect my sister to take care of them with him. The EM drops the kids off on Friday night at my sister's house with one pack of diapers and tells them that, oh, by the way, she'll be gone Friday through Sunday at 5 p.m. and bounce to another state for the weekend. The EM doesn't offer any kind of payment or general thank you but expects my sister and her roommate to parent her two kids for the next three days. That's three days straight with someone else's two children you aren't related to when, when you anticipated it as a babysitting situation for a few hours at a time. They're at the age where they require a lot of attention too. Diaper changing, all meals made and prepared, the general vigilance. Update, I got a text from her that the kids were just picked up and the mom told my sister that she could have the kids anytime she wants to get some more practice as though she were doing my sister a favor. For whatever reason, my sister hasn't had direct conversation with her yet. She didn't want to have it in front of the kids. She needs to calm down so that she doesn't get in trouble for overdoing it. This is the thing I don't understand. Why would you leave your children, your precious children, off with people you barely know? It just seems really stupid to me, but I guess that's the thinking of an entitled mother is you can just pawn your kids off whenever you don't want them or when you, whenever you don't want them around. Yeah, I'm sure those kids are going to be great when they grow up. Anyway, that's all the stories I have today. Please stop on by Reddit to show the OP some love and an upvote. Links to the original stories will be in the description box below. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to let you know when I've uploaded new content. Thank you for watching and have a great day.